Welcome to Trading Lounge in the European Indices for the 29th of June and we're going to be looking at the FTSE and the DAX. I'm going to start with the FTSE first today and um, this particular count to the upside, uh, there is a problem with it but it's in line with the DAX and the S&P 500 and that is that we have uh, wave 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 here and going up for 5 so this will make wave 1 here and we're coming back from A and a B and a C wave here for wave 2 and then moving up there further. If this market is going to crash then we would need to see the 61.8% retracement level here as the resistance and then the market would fall down further from that point. Um, the problem with this impulse wave to the upside here is wave 4 overlaps wave one here. So in that regard, we could count this as an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave here as a corrective move to the upside, and then see the market fall much further from this point. However, um, what we will be doing is we'll be trading short here anyway, and if the market does collapse and moves further down, we'll be on the right side at the right time. Okay, so uh, in both cases were okay here. Um, we do need to explore this wave B here a little bit further as we did last week as well um, and then we'll come back to this count here. So we're going to go to the four hour chart and the one hour chart just to explore a variation on this particular move here and also when that um, uh, when we see validation and invalidation on that particular move that we're going to talk about here. <clears throat> so uh, We've got our five waves up for wave one, uh, and then we've got this particular pattern here where um, we can call this the A wave here, and then we can call this the A, the B, well, an A and a B and a C for the B wave, and then up for one and back for two, up for three, four, five here for wave C of B here. So in a nutshell, if that top there gets taken out, then we know that we're on that side of it. Otherwise, we'll be looking to the short side here. So we're going to investigate uh, these these two uh, patterns a little bit further and also where we can look to uh, to go short at that point. So um, with that, we'll go just to the hourly chart and stay on the sort of bullish count, I guess, the bullish count within a corrective pattern. So I don't think this is the case, but we need to present it anyway. And um, in this instance here, we're looking at, well, as I mentioned, wave A here, an A and a B and a C wave here for wave B, and then looking for five waves up here for wave C of B, which would be a little bit further up. I could probably bring these across here to make it a bit more sort of realistic in a way, something like this here. So in the first instance, um, we could go long above this high here, right? but we can also bring that down to the second high here as well. Today, um, we'd be expecting the market to rally back up here. Um, so we'd need to move up here first and then come back down halfway, move up here and then move back halfway. Then you can lower, put that in there uh, as such, but otherwise I'll just copy that and put that there. So we want to go along on the second high here. So I'll discuss this a little bit more here, and uh, we're expecting the market to go up to this point here, went a bit higher, we're expecting it to come down to this point here, uh, and then have a rally back up here. <clears throat> in both cases that we'll be looking at today, we're kind of expecting a move up here, uh, and then back down. The bearish count, of course, comes in where we just continue down through here for this. So we need to understand that. So we're going to look at that on the 15 minute chart. And on the 15 minute chart here, we're looking at wave B being completed up here. This is the same as the S&P 500. So we're looking for wave one down here and then looking at this as an A and a B and a C wave to this point here with five in here, one and two and three and four and five in here for wave two. And then looking at this as an impulse wave down here, which counts quite nicely as an impulse wave. A little bit tricky to see it in there, but you can see the powerful move there. I can show you on <coughs> 100 ticks. So on 100 ticks, you can see the nice strong third wave coming down here and per perhaps one and two and three and four and five. To, maybe we've got the low in here already for this uh, for the FTSE. Um, that said, um, we would be looking for, this was the move area down here in this box here, and then we're looking for an ABC rally back up here. 
Uh, so the 50-60% is at 6,200 here. So I guess if the we could go long on this second high, as I mentioned before, we can go long here, but we would need to see the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, then a corrective pattern here, and then you can go long from that point. Okay, take these highs out. That way we'd be having support on 6.2 and would be um, above the 61.8% mark here anyway. Also in geometry terms, as we use the Fibonacci as a price ratio over here, well, the 62 is important as well in the bigger picture as it's 61.8% uh, in terms of price ratio. So um, just a little thing on the side there. But um, yeah, all in all, um, and this is the same for all the markets we're looking at, we're looking for a move down, we're looking for an ABC rally, and then we're looking to either go long or to go short. So once this low is in place here, which it could already be on this low here, um, it could just rally from this point here. Um, but the time that stocks open and things that, um, I mean, the, the mark, all the indices, all the futures markets are down quite a lot. The stocks need to open and they will drop as well. And um, well, they're actually on ending financial year, so we might see a bit of volatility in the banks uh, for countries that have got their accounting uh, finishing in uh, the end of June. So just be mindful of that. But um, in a nutshell, we're looking for an ABC pattern and then down again from that space there. And we can go short on these two lows here with a line through it. Once this is in place down here, then we can move up. If um, if you can actually figure out that this is actually three waves here, then you can short much further above here as well. And it may the other thing too, it may not reach all the way back up here as well. So you need to be mindful of that it may just come down, drop down to here for some reason, and then have some sort of rally here. Well, then you've got the two here to get through this point. Um, but whichever way you go, you need to, if you can't follow the count, you need to be short below 6,100. Okay, and then you also need to be building in a few trades down here as well for all of this. So here you've got group two, the 80 here. So that will be 60, 65, 65 in here somewhere, 72 and 80. Once the 72 becomes the resistance in here, then you can also add to the position as well. Let's take a look at the um, the DAX. So on the DAX, we've got the same thing here. We don't have wave four overlapping here as such, but we've got one, two, three, four, five here. And we're looking for an A and a B and a C wave. Um, in relation to a wave two here, um, <clears throat> the wave B, uh, normally when we're looking at wave, when we're looking at a wave two, we're always looking at, normally we're looking always at a, uh, a, a simple zigzag pattern, which is an A and a B and a C, which is a five, three, five structure here. Now I can see that the B wave, the time it's taken to do create that little move up through here, that's long enough in terms of ratios and proportions in proportion to wave one here. That's enough time spent there for that for this type of pattern. If it was a wave four we were looking at, <clears throat> well then we would be um, be mindful of more complications in there. But it should be okay where it is now for this. So we're just going to drill in here to the four hour chart. And in this case here, we've got a nice clean one, two, three, four, five here, because we've got five here after a three wave correction, then we should get another five over here. So we can look at this as wave one, and two here, and then looking down for three, four, and five coming down here. That's what we're expecting. Um, <coughs> the wave two could pull back to the 61.8% retracement level. We'll, we'll bring that in uh, once we've got confirmation. Confirmation is really just taking this low out here. Once that's breached, then any upside is will, will be negated because um, we'll just be seeing more downside because we've got we've got five we've got five waves here and we've also got five waves over here. So because of this five waves after a corrective move, we should get another five. So we've got five here. I suppose we could count this here as um, you know if you could squeeze a correction out of this, then you could probably call this wave one here with an A wave and a B wave and a C wave to this particular point. Um, or it could get more complicated and the wave B could be up here, so so on. But um, this is the most likely scenario. And taking that low out here, 
that's where you need to be short and then that will take you all the way down to the medium level here which put that three there on the 11,500 area through here it didn't touch over here so it may not touch over here but this is the this is the main level in this area here you can we'll have a look at how to go short let's move into this here on the hourly then the 15 minute chart so we've already talked about being short uh, here for this so um, we can look to add to the positions here so <clears throat> might go to the 15 minute chart but just in the bigger picture here from wave B here we're looking for one two three four and five here for wave C sorry about that but um, something like that and um, we'd be looking doesn't hurt to put the old trend lines in it's always safe to swim between the flags so to speak so <clears throat> something like that I mean you can refine that much further but we are looking for five waves here and we want to be able to short the market again from this high here down to this low here so that brings us, that's about right, brings us in about there. Move that. I won't put that in green. I'll just leave it for the time being, but I will move this, delete that here. And we don't need that now. <coughs> so we should be looking for an A and a B and a C wave up here. So with that in mind we want definitely want that low is important okay but I think we can also just short below the 12,000 make sure that becomes the retested resistance uh, the classic trading levels pattern to the uh, to to the downside so let me just have a look at these patterns here for a moment <clears throat> so this is this just pretend this is the 12,000 here so the market will come down come back up it may even come back up above the level there but we've got this is the entry here then we can also use this low as the entry but you may be able to get a better one in over here as well so even in this little pattern here it will be this bigger pattern here as well because when it comes down it needs to do the same thing the other variation on this is this one here where it doesn't stop at the level here but it shouldn't bother us because we still have this low and this low to work on because it's once it's moving up here we want to see if it rejects this price point here that's what we're looking at just very simple patterns <clears throat> they're helpful if if you don't understand the Elliott pattern and look hey I don't even understand it sometimes you know sometimes I'm left scratching my head and I only really use it the Elliott pattern when when I can see it and it's clear and support and resistance to me are the best indicators well maybe not the best the volume is probably even better but because we've got a cfd platform here i can't trust the volume on this these things so that makes it a bit i mean the price and the volume they're the two main indicators if you always really want to be using and as you get more professional you want to drop off all the noise and the fluff and make things as clean as possible and just using um price bars you know i mean it doesn't really make a big difference between candles and bars um but um i just think that the 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 candles tell you a story but you shouldn't believe that story so much all the time you're better off basically knowing your own story knowing how you perceive it and also too i find that a lot of new traders like to have the bars um, nice and green and red all the time and I don't think that's a really good idea because one of the biggest problems that traders new traders face and mediocre traders and and so on one of the biggest obstacles to overcome is the emotional side of trading it's the biggest thing now if you're long in a market and you're using red and green candles and you've got a big red candle there well that's going to hit you emotionally isn't it i mean once you put your money in the market you're in the market too and you're you know you're part you're part of it and you're part of the emotional movement of the whole thing so you really need to find ways to detach yourself from that so getting rid of of the colored bars so you can 
be more scientific about it and, and look at the facts of what's actually happening, um, you know, open the curtain up and get behind it a bit, then then you're much better off. Sorry for waffling on. I just started, so I had to keep going. Um, in a nutshell, just to recap this, we want the 12,000 as the resistance. That's, that's the... That's the point. But at that point, too, the market's already come down here. So we also want to be able to get in a little bit early. So um, I'll just put this here. So those three, those two lows here <coughs> will give you a, a shorting opportunity up there as well. And just like a trend line, you'll get the same thing happening as well. So even a trend line here, you'll get the same patterns. You get the arrival, the reaction, the first low below the level, then the retest here, and then down. Sometimes you get two retests here, so you need to be mindful of your stop. So you'd only get out of this position if this other side here became the support again. So it went up through here and come back and then found support here and then took that high out here then you'd move out, but but otherwise there's no point in moving out. Um, and that's where the emotional side comes in, and that's when you've got, you know, big red and big green things, colour happening there to spike your own emotion. It's not such a, not so, I don't, well, it's only my personal opinion anyway. Um, let's just go to the 15-minute chart and nail this down a little further. So... Um, it got a bit messy up here for us, and we we're looking at two counts, I remember, but um, we've got the A, the B, and the C here for wave two, wave one here, wave two here, wave three here, wave four in here. We may even have wave five finished on this low here. I'm not quite sure how this is going to play out, but when the cash opens, we should see this, um, we could see this, rather, um, bounce off the 12 here. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to play out through here. <coughs> but as I mentioned... Um, we don't need to do too much, just need to chill out and we just need to wait for this, um, some sort of A, B, C here that can bring us back up into this space here and you want to draw a line through there to go short through that, that space there and I'll draw it like this but you'll have to shift it, you know, it won't be, it, it, rare, it's rarely like that, it's always something a bit different but um, you just need to uh, work it out the best you can, you know. Um, that's it. At this stage, we leave the stop out of the way. Once we've got that high in play here, and that's done and we've moved down, then we can bring any stops down to that particular point. If you do have short trades in here at the moment and you are concerned about, you know, being exposed with the market coming back up that way, well, then you'll just simply have to take some money off the table so you can breathe um, at the current low here. So, whatever that means to you. You need to be able to get to there without sweating it out, you know. And um, when you, if, you know, if you want to, the stop's up here, but you can bring the stop down here further. But at getting, having the stop here would be the same thing again as well. You see the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, and then you would have this corrective move here. So then you could bring the market, the stop down to here, then you can bring the stop down to here, and at that point there, you may as well go along from that point and go along from that point there as well. It's good um, to switch direction straight away. Um, it teaches you to be more disciplined um, and move with the market rather than moving with your opinions because uh, you can get a bit shaky on your opinions. Alrighty, that's enough. Thanks for tuning in and thanks for the support. I really appreciate it. Cheers.